years at Michigan State, State where, where every one of his family members spent some time at, and where he got his foundation education, he moved to Arizona. Arizona. He finished his BFA degree there with a minor in secondary education. At that time, Sean wanted to be a high school teacher, which he did in Phoenix. After three years of that, Sean decided that he wanted to teach at the college level and that he was going to get his master's degree if he was going to be He originally came to Portland to visit a friend and to check out Portland State University for their master's program. But after getting lost on public transportation, <laughs> Sean found himself at PNCA's door. So call it serendipity or call it fate, Sean met with an admissions counselor that day and fell in love with PNCA's tight-knit community. Soon after, Sean applied to PNCA and was admitted as one of the first MFA students in the college's history. Like Derek, Sean was introduced to Pika's Time Based Arts Festival and therefore performance art. Before this exposure, he had thought of performance art as something equivalent to dumping spaghetti on your head while reciting poetry. At the festival, Sean was introduced to artists like Reggie Watts, whose work addresses the issues of contemporary American culture with satire and is accessible to anyone regardless of how much they know about performance art. Sean started bringing elements of this inspiration into his own work via internet podcasts. This new form of work for Sean started off like artistic NPR shows, where he would address difficult political issues. He became aware of the dry quality of this approach, and his podcast quickly developed into what he refers to as South Park Radio. He explains that by using humor for sad or difficult topics, he creates a comfortable starting place for conversations to happen. He wants his work to be a way to keep the difficult topics that he feels need attention in the foreground of his audience's thoughts. He considers himself a pioneer, and quite rightfully so, as one of the first MFA graduates of PNCA. Please help me to welcome our first ever in the history of PNCA MFA student speaker, Sean Carney. Staging a sit-in at the Bennett offices and raising complete hell 
But living in the unit during the first three weeks even for free was positively disgusting. If it's 115 degrees outside in Phoenix, the inside of what was essentially a glorified storage unit reaches temperatures close to 140 degrees. Then in 2007, at the age of 25, I applied to a brand new, never before attended MFA program here in Portland. <laughs> when I started in September of that year, I noticed some metaphoric similarities between this program and that apartment. <laughs> However, the figurative landlord in this situation was significantly more pleasant. The goose. <laughs> After two years here, I'm proud to be, as they keep calling me, a pioneering member of this class. In fact, sometimes we even felt like pioneers in the game Oregon Trail, wondering why the school was only buying supplies like salt and rope and continually insisting that we make our oxen ford the river. <laughs> in all seriousness, what we were presented with was an opportunity that few receive in an MFA program, and that's a chance for authorship. And this class that I'm in has shaped and molded an experience that's going to be had by new classes for years after the day. And I can honestly say that I'm extremely proud of all of my classmates, especially Craig Wheat. <laughs> With the openness and care that MK displayed in running this program, we were all able to feel empowered through the process and integral. That cannot be said for most MFA programs or degrees in general. And this is important because, as Derek mentioned earlier, Artists today have a significantly different role than in the past. We're not all into eating pain, self-mutilation, solitary mourning, or excessive drinking. Um, anyways, the point is that <laughs> we see ourselves as conceptual practitioners. We're informed, socially engaged members of this American culture whose role is to question and investigate the phenomena surrounding us. And I'd like to thank this school for beating that into us. Granted, I no longer am able to enjoy anything entertaining, even the Beatles, without assuming that there are only spectacular simulations designed to numb and degrade me. But I do know why the White Album looks like it does. It's because some album art is unrepresentable. This part of the audience got that. In closing, I do want to sincerely thank MK for her guidance and care during this process, and also Anne Marie Oliver for her challenging ideas and questions. And I want to thank Emily Ginsberg for leading our critique seminar courses this year. Emily has been an invaluable asset to all of us and believed in us even when we didn't. I like to think of the three of you as sort of a, a divine trinity of art theory. So, in the name of the Goose, the Gans, and the Amory, Amen. <laughs>